out of food. I still believe that up to the day. I hate vegetables with a passion, right? And I link that to pain to mean that eating vegetables, because I, I remember when I was younger, my mother used to make us eat the vegetables, the, our vegetables before we ate our food and before I drank my nice soda, right? So to me, I had to get past the vegetables in order to get to the good stuff. So to me, vegetables equal pain. I associate that with pain and suffering, right? I also linked uh, cardio uh, to pain because I hated jogging, hated running. I just hated, you know, getting my heart rate up. I hated that because it was just painful. I also hated getting up in the morning. I linked that to pain as well. Anyone else in here linked any of these things to pain, vegetables, cardio, or getting up early in the morning? Yes, you could unmute your mic and say yes, or you could type it. But I link that to pain. Now, yes, uh, yeah. I think laziness. Laziness. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, that's what you mean, getting out of bed? You know, it was one of my options, but I couldn't put it fast enough when you ask for reasons why you can't um, keep your New Year resolution. Okay. I don't feel pain. I just know, well, uh, okay, I'll do it tomorrow, you know? So that, see, is that laziness or is that procrastination? See, if, 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 that's something, if that's something you want to do and you're putting it off, you're procrastinating with it, right? Right. Now, the reason, remember now, that's the effect. That's the uh, effect. The cause, the reason, so the cause is the reason. The reason that you're putting it off goes right back at the same point. You're linking it to pain, right? Now I'm going to explain right now. So waking up early, you linking it. I do, but I'm not as bad as it. I do, but I didn't get fat. I just read these comments, sorry. <laughs> linking, <laughs> you're funny. Linking, linking it to pain. So for me, getting out of bed early meant, number one, I had to give up some sleep, yeah. right? I love sleep. If anyone knows me, knows I love sleep with a passion. So I linked that to pain to mean, hey, I am giving up sleep. I am losing something that I like. I am losing sleep, right? So I was forcing myself to get up, right? Getting up early, man, I had to leave the comfort of my bed and my room. Getting up early means I have to leave my wife who in the blanket next to me, right? I have a nice warm body next to me. Now I got to get up and go in the cold front room. Right, so all of this is was a was a painful experience for me. On top of that, trying to get up to go exercise, for example, that was even more pain because now I gotta get up early, which is painful. And I don't mean physical pain; I mean mentally and emotionally. Right? If you follow what I'm saying when I say mentally, emotionally, and I also had to go get up and train, and then going to the gym now is pain because now I gotta sweat. Now I got to go, I got to go get ready. I got to put on clothes. I got to drive to the gym. I got to go lifting heavy weights. I got to go doing cardio. And I got, I got my muscles to be hurting. All that is considered pain. All that's considered work for me. If you know anything about your brain, the human brain, the human brain is designed to move you towards pleasure and away from pain. That's two of the primary functions of the human brain. So whatever you consider, I actually have it here. I just realized that. Your mind rejects it, then your body runs from it. Whatever you consider to be painful, your body says, okay, Helen doesn't want this, or Davina doesn't want this, so let me make sure that she doesn't do this. So when it's time to get up in the morning, because you have already told your mind that, hey, this is painful for me, I don't want to do this, your mind kicks in. So then your mind says, all right, since you told me you don't want to do this, let me do everything to make sure you don't get up in the morning. Let me do everything to make sure you don't go to the gym. So what does your mind do? Your mind sends a message to your body and your mind tells your body, I want you to feel extra tired. Remember that backache you had a couple of weeks ago? Let's bring that back right now. I want you to feel like that, 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 that neck ache you had, let's do that. Or your, your mind is going to remind you of a stressful situation to distract you. Your mind is going to remind you, hey, you can't go to the gym. Remember, you got to call your mommy. You, this, you, 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 got, you promised someone you was going to do something. You got to clean your house. And your mind is going to work against you. So your body is going to work against you. Whatever you, tell, whatever you tell your mind to do, it's going to tell your body to do. So you won't get out of bed because you subconsciously told your mind not to let you get out of bed. 
you, you follow what I'm saying? Y'all give me some feedback. Y'all catch what I'm saying? Did I explain that correctly? Or clearly, I should say? Yeah, and that's where, uh, where, the, where normally fear comes in as well. Say again? I said that's where, for me, I think fear comes in. The fear of, of different stuff. And then, even, even if you look at fear, fear is an effect. That's not a cause. Say, wow, you took that all the way to you. <laughs> on point. Yes, you're on point. Fair is, thank you, thank you. Fair is an effect. What causes the fail? What really, well, let me, let me ask you, Stefan, since you brought it up. What, what, what is fairful to you? Fair of what exactly? I think fear of overworking myself and then causing some kind of um, pain or... You may die from a heart attack if you work out too hard. That kind of stuff. I guess it's in the mind. Right. Say, say, say the last piece. I say, I guess it's in the mind, like you say. Yeah, yeah. And so let's look at, since we're on fair, for example, before we go, I hope we don't run over an hour. Um, Y'all okay with me going a little over an hour because I realize it's already 10. No, you're, good. Well, you're good with time. All right, good, good. Just I go very deep with this, my thing. I love this type of thing, you know? It's my thing. So when you look at fail, what really, what, what's the cause of fail? What causes fail is past experiences and memories, right? It all goes back down to your belief system, whatever you fail, right? You fail certain things. You think it might cause a heart attack. You fail being in pain, all of that, because of what you've heard other people do or say or what you've experienced in the past and you're projecting those past memories and experience into the present um i'm thinking that it will happen in the future you see what i'm saying because you don't actually know if you're going to have a heart attack you don't actually know if you're going to be in pain you're just basing it on what happened in the past or what you heard someone or seen someone do on tv because everything we everything we we think all of our beliefs came from teachers parents friends siblings television social media everything we take in with our five senses that helps to form our belief system right the problem is most people are not conscious of what their belief what they are believing right this is why i want to one of the purposes of this presentation is to build your awareness of what you believe and help you to break that and disempowering belief right? You fear pain. You might have a heart attack. You might overwork yourself. You might pull a muscle. All that might happen, yes, but you don't know that. Even if you go to the gym, even if you get up and you go exercise today and you pull a muscle, right? That then, I shouldn't say that causes you. A lot of people allows that to form a belief that, hey, when I exercise, I don't know how to do it, so I am going to hurt myself. You use that past experience to project a future outcome that you don't know will happen. You, you catch that? So what you're really doing is trying to predict your future, which you cannot do. You're making assumptions, you see? Um, and there's a number of ways you can actually get over that. That even goes even much deeper than I think I have time to go in this presentation, but I would say focus on linking things to pleasure as opposed to pain. All right. So for example, so well, that's actually what I have in this slide. The key is to make the mental switch to pleasure. So let's use exercise for example. Well, I, I always like to exercise, but like how Stefan and whoever else, if you, if, well, you were fearful of exercise, if you start linking exercise, if you start, oh, hell, you start linking getting up early to uh, pleasure, how would that look? I hated getting up early. I always called myself, I always said I'm not a morning person, right? That's who I identified myself with. So in order for me to change that, I had to change my whole identity, right? I changed it from saying I'm not a morning person to I don't like to get up in the morning. You see the big difference? 
One of them, where I said I'm not a morning person, that was my identity. So that was a part of me. So for me to start getting up early, I had to change who I was. But if I just describe not being a morning person, if I just describe myself as I don't like to get up in the morning, now if I want to start getting up in the morning, I don't have to change myself. I just have to change an activity that I do. That's actually how I quit smoking, by changing that identity, that, making that mental switch. Now, that's me. I hate mornings unless it's business. I, I even hate mornings even when it's business, right? But I made the business. <laughs> Helen, stop making me laugh, man. <laughs> so I made the switch to associating getting up because I normally get up about 4 a.m. in the mornings, right? That's my normal wake-up time. I associated getting up in the mornings with pleasure because now I have extra time to do everything I want. Because when I get up in the mornings, the first thing I do is meditate. I meditate for 30 minutes. I, then I go train. I train for an hour. And then I go study. I study for about half an hour to an hour. And then I, I go to work. I actually do get do my work. Um, and getting up in the morning means, hey, I got more time in my day. Hey, I am more energetic. Hey, so I, I link all of that to pleasure. When before getting up early in the morning, man, I have to uh, uh, I have to eliminate some of my sleep. That's pain. Getting up early in the morning means I have to leave my nice warm bed. That's pain. I stop associating it with pain points and start associating getting up in the morning with pleasure points. So now I started looking forward to getting up in the morning. You have to trick your, your mind. People think that, most people think that they are their mind, but you are not your mind. You have a mind, but you are not your mind. And peop, most people think that they are their mind, that they, 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 they them and they are, the, what I'm trying to say, their mind and themselves are one. That's why they don't control their mind. Most people operate subconsciously for most of the day, meaning we have the same thoughts day after day, the same beliefs. We do the same things. We get up the same way, we brush our teeth the same way, we, we uh, get in and out of our car, we turn on the radio, uh, and we reach to work, we fix this on our desk, we do things repetitively every day, the day after day. And we don't think to do things differently because we're not aware that we're living subconsciously. But what I wanna do is bring certain things to your conscious mind. When you're consciously aware of something, that's when you can make uh, steps towards changing it. You see? So whatever it is that, you're, that you want to do, that you are procrastinating with, or that you are fearful of, think of how, and you could even put pen to paper, think of how you're linking these things to pain. I did that. I made a list. I did a T-chart. I, I do a T-chart for everything, right? I do a T-chart. On the left side, I did, okay, getting up early. What all of, my, what all of the pain points I'm linking uh, getting up early too. And then what are the good things or how I could link getting up early to pleasure? How is it benefiting me? How is it getting me closer to my goal? And I started focusing on the pleasure points when it comes to uh, getting up early in the morning. Same thing with vegetables, right? I eat vegetables now. I don't eat it every day, but I eat it, you know, occasionally with my meal. I eat it probably every couple of days with my meal, but that's better than me. I, like, I, I went years without eating vegetables, right? Because I kept linking it to pain. Now I link it to pleasure. With vegetables, I get to stay sexy because I know pizza ain't gonna do it, right? So I eat my vegetables, I do my cardio because I know without the vegetables and without the cardio, the sexiness can float away. You see, I can't have that. I remember I got a woman, I gotta keep her happy. She like, sexiness, you know? So I link those things to pleasure, right? I want you to do that. That's your first homework for when you leave this is invaluable information. Sheldon, I like you. You get a prize. Good stuff. This is, I want you to, that's your first homework. Link, decide or uh, identify what you link to pleasure. Identify what you link to pain. That's causing the procrastination. That's causing the fear. Remember, procrastination and fear are, is an effect. That's not the cause. Any problem you have, I want you to look at the cause of the problem and address it there. Okay? First set of homework. Teach out what you link in the pain and then put what you link in the pleasure and then put all your focus on the pleasure points of the day going forward. Amen? You with me? Type amen. It's amen, man. You can type it or say it. I don't care. Either one. 
All right. So I'm talking about good stuff. Good stuff. I like y'all. All right. Amen. 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 Tony, Crystal, Lakeisha, Davina. Excellent. Excellent. And if you all have any questions as I go, unmute yourself and just ask your questions. This is an open forum. All right. Now, let's get to point number two, numero dos. Before, Pauline, you, you, before you move on, could you tell me what you said the last T-chart would look like? So the T-chart you're going to do is a capital T on the left side, but on the top of it. So you may need more than one T-chart. On the top of it, you're going to put something that you're procrastinating with or something that you're fearful of. I procrastinate with exercising, get up in the morning, getting up in the morning. On the left, you're going to put how you're linking that to pain. You know, what all the pain points are, bullet points or number it. And then on the right, you're going to put how you could link that to pleasure. So I hate getting up in the morning. I link that to pain because I have to get out of my nice warm bed. I link that to pain because I'm losing sleep. How can I link that to pleasure? I link that to pleasure because now I have more time in the day. Now I could get ahead of my competitors because now everyone else is sleeping. So I get a jump start on my competitors when it comes to business, stuff like that. One hour okay. pain, one hour pleasure. All right, then focus on the pleasure. All right, don't look at the pain no more. Forget about the pain. Look at it, crumble it up, throw it away. All right. Any other question before I go on to point number two? All right. So the second reason, the second cause of procrastination of inconsistency is goal focused. People focusing on the goal. This is a big problem. Do not focus on your goal. Goal. I have it here actually. Do not focus on the goal. I wish all of y'all was in room, one room. This one I'll make the whole room say it together. I will not focus on my goal. You know, I'm if I was doing this in person. Goal. There you go. I mean, I can still do it technically. <laughs> do not focus on your goal. Now, I know this is something different from what you're used to hearing. Um, because people normally tell you focus on your goal, and that's where I was making a mistake, and that's why I wasn't really achieving my goal. It's because I was focusing on my goal. now. Remember, whatever you focus on, you focus on the goal, you get at the goal, but that's not the case. And I think I have another point on this. So when you focus on a goal, it does two things, right? It reminds you of the distance you are. It reminds you of how far you are from your goal. And it reminds you of how hard you have to work to get to the goal, right? This is what leads to you procrastination, procrastinating. This is what leads to you not being motivated. This is what leads to you being fearful, right? These are the causes, right? When you focus on your goal, like... I had I have 45 pounds because in those in my before and after pictures I actually that was a 45 pound difference I lost 45 pounds between those two uh, pictures and I think in the in the first in the picture on the left I was something like I was a I think I was I was 210 pounds in the before picture and I had about 20 something percent body fat in my after picture, the transformation picture, I was 180 or so, 180 pounds or so, and I had about 9% body fat, right? Let's say I was focusing just on the goal itself, right? And I started to think of how far I was from losing 45 pounds. You think I would have do everything I needed to do to get there? Or I would have been thinking every day of how far I am. This one little workout session isn't going to get me to this 45 pound loss, right? I had clients when I used to, um, but I still do coaching. But when I used to focus on health and wellness coaching, I had clients who would come to me to lose 50 pounds, right? And I would start them off by doing um, 10 push-ups or 10 jumping jacks per day. And that's it for the whole week, not even per day, for the week. So they did a, a 10 jumping jacks or 10 squats 
or 10 push-ups for the entire week. That's it. And they would often ask me, um, but wouldn't this take me forever to lose 50 pounds if I'm only doing 10 of these per week for the whole week? That's, that takes me less than you know a minute to do this for the whole week. And my answer is, yes, it's going to take you forever if you keep doing this. But what I want you to focus on is what you're doing today, right? When you focus on how far you are, you're going to focus on, I got 45 pounds to lose weight. I got 50 pounds to lose weight. What good is one workout going to do me today? What good is it going to do me? Even if I work out four days this week, what good is that going to do me? This, this vegetable, this leaf that I'm eating right now, what good is that going to contribute towards me losing 50 pounds in the next three months, right? Because the goal would be very far. So I want to hear this one. You're going to hear this one. It also helps you to focus on the hard work that you have to do. So my transformation journey, right? That entailed, because I, I did that transformation in about, I don't know, that took me about six months to do that before and after picture. I went to the gym two times every day, one hour each session. I ate about six meals every day. Um, six very, very specific meals where I measured my cup of rice. I measured, I weighed my protein, my meat, the chicken breast, the jasmine rice. And I, I was, I had a very tailored plate six times a day. And I had a timer that reminded me when I need to eat. So I was very disciplined and strict with my meal plan and my training. If I was focusing on that goal, I would have been focusing on how much days I need to consistently keep this thing up. You know how much early mornings that took? Do you know how much training sessions that took? How much sweat that took? How much muscle pains that took? How much eating leaves and rabbit food that took? How much chicken breast? I, I became a chicken breast master. You understand? That took all of that. That was work. That was hard work. And then on top of that, I had to consistently motivate myself, right? That ain't easy, consistently motivating. I think I, I speaking about motivation in the next point. But when you focus on the goal, it reminds you of how far you are from achieving it. And it keeps reminding you of how much work you need to get, you need to do to get to that point. You understand? You guess, catch what I'm saying? See, I used to a live audience. I used to looking at a computer. This COVID-19 thing need to hurry up and over now. I need to get back in front of my live audience. You know? I like your energy. I like to reach out and touch people, you know? But do you do you understand? Type a yes if you do. If you still don't understand, I could explain that slightly differently. Okay, Lakeisha, good, good. Yes. Charlotte, yeah. yes. Charlotte, yes. Excellent, excellent. That's a definite yes. You preaching. <laughs> Amen. So I'm talking about, you know, I actually is preaching church, you know. They saw me preaching and doing something. All right, I get distracted. But I, yeah, I used to that sometimes. So that's why you shouldn't focus on the goal, right? Now, what would you say is a thing to focus on? De, de Nero, De Nero, pronounce that correctly? Love the energy. Thank you. I like you, you know, you always make me feel. Like I loved. Thank you. Yes, De, De Niro. Okay, good. So what you should focus on is actually my next slide. The key is to focus on today. Focus on the journey, not the goal. Big difference. When I made that switch from focusing on the journey and not the goal, that's when my life completely changed. Like I get goosebumps now even saying it. Like that completely transformed my entire life. I was able to transform my body. I was able to scale my business. I was able to become a better man, a better father, a better husband. I was able to become a better person by focusing on what I did today, focusing on the journey and not the goal, right? Now, oops, guess I'm moving too fast. No, 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 ask the questions. You're moving too fast. Now, I wanna put a disclaimer in here. Right? When I say don't focus on your goal, you still need to have clearly defined goals. 
Let me say that again. You still need to have clearly defined goals, right? Your goals matter. Like I keep my goals stuck up. I stick my goals up on my wall. I stick my goals up as the screensaver on my phone. Yes, yeah, smart goals. I stick my goals up on my laptop. I always have my goals visible. So, and I always look at my goals. Every morning I get up, I look at my goals. Every night before I go to bed, I look at my goals, right? I keep it visible. I make sure I can always see, hear, and touch my goals, right? With that being said, I don't focus on it. You still need them, and you still need to have them in front of you. But remember, you get what you focus on. So what I want you to do is focus on the journey. Focus on what did you do today? Ask yourself the question, what progress did I make today? I always say it's, it's like being married, right? I know, I don't know. Question, so do you keep doing this until you reach your goal or do you still look at your goals during the process? You always look at your goals, always. If they're your goals, remember now, everything happens in the mind, right? You need your, your you achieve your goals first in your mind and then you achieve it in reality, right? If you don't first see yourself being successful in your mind, you will not be successful in reality, all right? So you have to keep your goals in your mind. That's why I meditate. A part of my meditation is calming my mind, think about nothing, and then a part of my meditation is thinking about me having already achieved my goal because now I have to associate my goals with pleasure. Remember the first point? Linking it to pleasure. I got to associate my goals with pleasure. So when I train my mind to realize how I would feel when I have already achieved this goal. Like I adopt, because you have to um, associate emotion with it, right? And that's a whole different presentation in itself. Visualization, meditation, uh, emotional intelligence, and associating emotions to your thoughts. That's a whole different, that's a whole like two-day seminar that I teach, right? But once you do that, you train your mind to associate your goal with pleasure. So you keep looking at your goal, keep it in front of you, Always review it daily, but don't focus on it. Okay? Now, okay, my point was after that. But I, the point I was making before that, ask yourself, what progress did I make today? So, it's, oh yeah, I don't know how many of you are married, right? But it's like being married. I could give my wife a massage today. I could give my wife a massage. I could cook breakfast for her. I could clean the whole house. I could give her a compliment, tell her how sexy, sexy she is, you know. I could rub her feet, you know. I could even give her a little pedicure, right? All that earns me brownie points today, okay? That does not contribute to my brownie points tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Every day you wake up, you hit the reset button, right? Yes, I love it. Thompson says, I guess what you're saying is that it is important to have goals, but it's more important how you go about accomplishing not make those goals. Like the process of tricking and changing. Yes, SK. Call you SK. That's correct. It's how you go about it, right? It's the steps you take, it's the daily action. Remember, you could have goals, but if you're not taking the necessary action, it's nothing happening, right? You need action. You take action on a day by day. Every day you wake up, ask yourself, how am I going to move towards my goal today? What action steps like, am I going to take today? What are my outcomes today? Right? Always ask yourself that every day. For example, when it came to my, my transformation, losing that 40 pounds and transforming my body, right? I had the goal to get, my goal was to get abs, by the way. Like, I, that was my whole goal. I wanted six pack abs. That was just, that was the goal. I didn't want to get healthy. I, did, I just wanted six pack out. That was the goal. So I had to look at what do I need to do to get abs? When I wake up this morning, I need to eat my six meals. When I wake up this morning, I need to go to the gym. This evening, I need to go to the gym because I had a strict timeline. I'm not saying you have to go to the gym two hours a day, seven days a week. That's kind of psychotic. And I know I kind of psychotic when it comes to training um, I'm not telling you to be psychotic but that's what I saw my that's what I had to do to achieve I focus on today I got up I ate my six meals today I did my two hours of training today boom 
I know now, I, I, and I look at my goal at the beginning of the day, and I focus on what I did throughout the day. I said no to that pizza, to that, that uh, cheeseburger that, that um, my friend was offering me. You know, I didn't duck out on the gym uh, to go chill with my girlfriend at the time, because I'll be for me and my wife got married. Um, I didn't, so is what you do on a daily basis to achieve that goal. That is, we're talking about um, what you focus on, on, not focusing on the goal. That leads to procrastination. What you focus on, focusing on your goal is the cause, is one of the causes of inconsistency. It's one of the causes of procrastination. Especially if you have big goals. Like me, I have big goals. I always have big goals. And normally what I used to do is focus on them. And I, I, like one of my goals, and I'm going to tell you this, one of my goals is to change the world. Like, and another one of my goals is to provide for my entire family. I'm talking about cousins, aunties, uncles, grandparents, the worst. I want to provide for everyone. And I want to change this world. Like I want to be, I want to be known as a world changer, right? But if I focus on changing the world, you know, people in the world, it's like what, seven, eight billion people, something like that in the world. If I focus on changing the world, I'd never go through that. I'd become discouraged every time because that seems like a big task. My financial goal, I want to earn, I want to be worth $2.3 billion. That exact figure, 2.3. I planned that down to the number, by the way. Goals, remember? You got to have goals, specific goals, smart goals. Someone typed it in earlier. And if I think I want to be a multi-billionaire, if I think about that goal, if I focus on that goal every day, you think I can move? No, because I'm going to procrastinate. I'm going to become discouraged because the little tiny steps I take in today compared to that big goal would seem insignificant. So I don't focus on the goal. I focus on that tiny step. Catch what I'm saying? Even those backwards, massages, cooking, guarding, and another the goal in mind. My wife, you, you, it doesn't work so hard. <laughs> but you made a daily step towards that. Yeah, yeah, it's daily steps. Yeah, tell me, brownie points, brownie points, you got to renew them daily. I learned that the hard way. Because when I first got married, I thought, you know, brownie points is roll over. I was so wrong. So wrong. Brownie points don't roll over. Not at all. Any questions on that point? Before we move on to point numero tres. Good. All right. Our final point. Number three, this is one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, causes of inconsistency and procrastination. This one is very important. I mean, they all are, but this is important. <coughs> Weak reasons why you want to achieve that goal. The reason you want to achieve the goal will play a huge part on whether or not you're consistent with achieving it. I'm going to explain this picture. I know you're looking at this picture like, what well, this got to do with anything in life, right? This is why I lost that 45 pounds and I had that transformation, transformation picture right here. You see the woman, well, you know, minus the shark, right? The woman taking the selfie, the reason I wanted, first of all, let me see who guessed. Who could guess the reason I transformed my body? What's the reason? Give me one reason. Sexy. Sexy. Yeah, but sexy is always the underlying reason, I, Helen. You know. You said, that's your, you said that's your favorite word. That is. That is. Sexy is a part of it to show off. That's close, the woman, it wasn't the woman, because you wanted a healthier body to live longer and to be happy for your kids. Oh, Thompson, that's such a noble reason, but that wasn't the reason at all. To My reason was stamina. so shallow. Is that? To increase your stamina. To increase my stamina. No, that wasn't it either. To get the girl. It was a very, very shallow reason. Very shallow. To live longer. No, no, to live long ain't shallow now. That's a good reason. Oh. To, to please my wife, no. To have a six pack. All right, so the closest is Sunita and uh, Lakeisha. I'll combine those two. 
what to I I wanted to do I did that whole transformation I lost 45 pounds not just that I transformed my body got six pack um eight six meals a day trained two hours a day I did all that for one reason that reason was so I could have pictures of myself with muscle that's it I didn't want muscles, you know. I wanted pictures of myself with muscles. That was my reason, right? <laughs> Before and after picture, that was for that one reason. I just wanted pictures of myself with muscles. I got them, <laughs> right? But I want to take pictures with the muscles and then post them to the world. <laughs> this is the truth. This, this, I like I being rid of each other. This is the truth. Because I wanted the world to see that I had muscles. I had abs. You know, it's the truth. Now, I say that I say that to say it does not matter what your reason is. Many people, most people, when I tell them that story, they tell me that's a very shallow reason. You know, that's vain. That's being conceited, right? And it's, it's all of those things, right? But that reason was strong enough to keep getting me up every morning. That reason was strong enough for me to go to the gym two hours a day. That was strong enough for me to eat leaf every day for three minutes, for six meals a day. That reason was enough for me to get the job done. That reason was enough for me to overcome and beat that procrastinating spirit that I had, right? That reason was enough for me to be consistent. One of the reasons, one of the causes of procrastination and inconsistency is people having weak reasons. This is another thing that I want you to do. Ask yourself, Whatever it is that you're procrastinating with or that you're inconsistent with, ask yourself, ask yourself, why do I want to do these things? Like if you're procrastinating with exercising, okay, why do you want to exercise? If you're procrastinating with getting out of bed early or if you're procrastinating with writing that book, um, you're procrastinating with starting that business, ask yourself, why do I want to start that business? Why do I want to to uh, transform my body. Why do I want to write that book? Why? Your reason will determine whether you, how motivated you are to go. Your reason is your motivation, right? I'd give another example. Colleen, you could have Photoshop your picture to, and get a six pack. I don't Photoshop. I wanted to take that selfie and post. I did a whole photo shoot. I'm trying to Photoshop a whole photo shoot, Colleen. Come here, Colleen. Come on. I did a whole photo shoot with my app. I did an abs photo shoot, literally, an abs photo shoot. And I posted it. You know, it's how we roll. No, I couldn't Photoshop it. But Helen, you stop laughing yet. <laughs> um, I forgot my chair to talk just now again. But your reason. I want you to identify, that's not a homework you have, identify your reason for wanting to do something. So whatever you're procrastinating with, whatever you're inconsistent with, I want you to write, I like to put pen to paper because I like to see things, I like to feel things. And when you write things down, it sticks in your mind more and you're more likely to remember it. And that's scientifically proven. And then when you repeat what you write down, it, increase, it even increases your chances of taking action towards what you wrote down. So thinking it is one thing, you increase your chances of taking action when you say it, then you increase your chances even more when you write it, then you increase your chances even more when you say it and write it at the same time when you read it. See what I'm saying? So that's why I'm a big fan of writing things down. I write everything down, write, type, stuff like that. So write down, why do I want to exercise? Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to do whatever you're procrastinating with? Write down why. If that why doesn't get you super excited, then come up with a stronger why. I don't care how shallow it is. I don't care how simple the why is. I don't care how complicated the why is. The why, the nature of the why doesn't matter. All it matters is, is that it drives you 
to be consistent towards when it has to drive you. Now, it won't always do the trick. Don't look for it to always, like you always get up in the morning happy. You always bounce and go to the gym. Now, it won't always have you happy, but at least it will generally keep you consistent and on path. Because I still hated vegetables. I still hated getting up early in the morning. I still hated all those things. But when I started thinking of how cool that would look when I get all them likes on social media for my six pack, and then I start posting and people would be like, oh, you got a transformation. Oh, you look sexy now and all that. When I started thinking about all of that, that my why, and as shallow as that was, that was enough to get me up to go post, to go, to, to, to go do what I had to do so I could take my pictures. See what I'm saying? Guess what I'm saying? For the weak reason, strong reason. Oh, jeez, what did I do? Everyone follow? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, we follow. Awesome, awesome, Sunita. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Good, good, good. Any questions? Actually, you're doing too bad with time. All right, solid. So I think this is my last slide here. So Mission Sexier is always about becoming better in every area of your life. Because the fact is, when you're progressing, it's, it's an area that when you're progressing, whatever area in your life you're progressing in, that's an area that you would be happy in. Progress equals happiness, right? Think about it now. Whatever area in your life that you are not happy with, it's only because you're not progressing in that area, you know. If you're not happy with your, in your financial life, it's because you're not progressing in that area. Your spiritual life, your health, um, your relationships, whatever area in your life you're not happy with, it's only because you're either stuck in one place or you're uh, moving backwards. You see what I'm saying? And being stuck is actually the same thing as moving backwards. You're either moving backwards or you're progressing forward. There is no middle ground. I want you to remember that there is no middle ground. You're either moving backwards or you're moving forward. There is no middle ground. All right? If you want to be happy, make sure you're progressing. That is what the whole concept of mission sexier. Sexier meaning better, smarter, stronger, faster. It's not just speaking about physically sexy. It's speaking about your mind, spiritually. You know, sexier, better in every area of your life. Amen? And that is the end of the presentation. If you guys want to, and like I say, everything I went over today, that came from my book. Um, you see this? That came from my book here. Um, the Secret to Finally Sticking to Your New Year's Resolution. First book, I write, I'm working on my second book now. That's going to sort of be a part two to this, um, but much more in depth. And... Uh, you could go to my website, nathanlsweeting.com slash book if you want to order the book. And you could follow me on Instagram and YouTube at Nathan L. Sweeting. Matter of fact, not you can. Go to YouTube, go to Instagram, and follow me. Who all have Instagram? Follow me. Um, oh, my phone is the camera. Yeah, been my phone. Uh, make sure I do that. Mainly Instagram, by the way. Um, I post content, free content there every day, um, well, almost every day, um, to help empower you. Some of the stuff that we go over today, I post my videos and pictures there as well. Um, now, may I have my free copy? Oh, yes, the giveaway. I'm the only one who asked for it. <laughs> um, well, my, I, I need, I need a, what could I do for, first of all, before I do the giveaway, any questions? Questions, comments? This was awesome, yeah. brother. Do you Thank you. Coach? Do you coach? Oh, yes, yes. I also do coaching. Um, or is it personal training? Or No, I do. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm also a certified life coach and a certified health coach as well. So, when, so my focus is really on you know, like do it, facilitating presentations and workshops for groups and companies. But people hit me up individually for one-on-one -on -one coaching which I also do, I do take on clients, that is telephone coaching. So how it works is I speak with my coaching clients 
on once a week, on average once a week, some clients once every two weeks, some clients even once a month for about an hour each time. And we go over your goals. You let me know what goals you want to achieve. I you know I have some coaching clients who are looking to lose weight. I am I have some coaching clients who are looking to scale their business, some who are looking to uh, go from being an employee to a business owner. Some, I even have some uh, coaching clients who want to become a better father, a better uh, uh, husband, like, you know, strengthen relationships with so different areas of your life I coach you with. And the reason I'm able to touch these different areas is because the principles of success are universal. So the same way I help you to lose 50 pounds is the same principles I'm going to help uh, John with to grow his business. It's the same principles like what we spoke about in this uh, presentation. So I coach one-on-one, -on -one, one hour at a time, telephone coaching. If you're interested, you could hit me up, message me at 447-7864. That's my cell phone number, 447-7864. Um, oh, I could just type it in the text, 447-7864. And uh, you can let me know if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching. Other than that, if you want to bring me in to speak with your group, you can go to my website um, to book me, or you can buy my book on my website. Any more? That answered the question, Helen? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Any more questions before we do the giveaway? No? All right. Now, the giveaway... Give away, give away. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Who could tell me? Actually, who could tell me what were the three causes that we discussed? and pain charlotte charlotte goal focus motivation and pain all right you got that part now give me a brief summary like a brief synopsis couple of sentences okay don't focus on your goal Be, um you focus on the on the journey to the goal awesome awesome Right, and, and then for the motivation, when you take one day at a time in this thing, you you you're gonna um, um think of what, what what's gonna make you strong, or like how you say what you wanted this six pack to um to um um um, um to to take your selfie and whatnot. It is gonna it's gonna make you feel pleasure, right? Pleasure, and so you wanted to get that um six pack going from not having that 210 pounds. All right, all right, all right. That's cool, that's cool. And then, so you did the, you did the goal focus. You did the motivation. Uh, what was the third one? And focus on, on the pleasure instead of the pain. Good, good, good. Excellent. Charlotte gets, uh, Charlotte, right? No, no who's yeah, that? Yes. Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E. So L O T D. <laughs> you got yes. me a book. And guess what? I'm your cousin. I'm Nathan's cousin. <laughs> really? Yes. This, this is your this is Nathan's cousin. I'm the cousin to Nathan and Milton and all of them. Wow. See, wow, wow that's why. Yes, and I just proud to hear you. I'm I appreciate this. This is so good. Thank you, thank you, thanks for the support. You get the book, awesome. Nice, thank I you. Just ordered. Now, how do I get it? How do I get it? So, what to do? You see, you see my number. I posted four four seven seven eight six four. Four four seven eight six four. Yes. Yeah, four four seven seven eight six four. Four four seven seven eight six four. Yes. Call that number. Yeah, so set. <laughs> Send me a message on that. Uh, what's up? You on WhatsApp? Yes. 
Yeah, what's up, me on that number? I'll arrange to get the book to you. All right. Thank you. And this I session is very informative. This is a sexy this session, eh? Don't lie. Yes. When I'm, I'm, uh -huh. While I'm listening to you, I was still visualizing your two pictures. I was saying, boy, that look good. Uh, even sexier, right? Yes, I was looking at the pictures. It, it really is something else. It looks nice. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I appreciate you, Charlotte. And I appreciate everyone, all the comments. Big reasons now. Asking everything I was about to skip the session with my mind and went off. But I'm so glad I came on. This was great. Love and appreciate. You Thank you, De Niro. Excellent, Nathan. Well done. Thank you, Colleen. Conflict of interest. Top nine of conflict of interest. I am very pleased. Says, Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Charlotte. But she's found me. Boy, Thompson, you really want this book. No, 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 no but I didn't, I didn't say it. Yes, you do, Charlotte. You do this. <laughs> yeah. so, yes, I deserve it. And you didn't even know I was um, family. It's just that uh, when I heard the uh, name, I registered because I want to be proud that I have successful family. There you go. There you go. That's right. I didn't even know that she was my family, so that didn't even count. She don't, right? And she, he, he wouldn't know me if he said me, know me, know me. And, and I, I'm going to be delivering this book. So I, I'm going to see you then. I'm delivering this book personally. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. I told him, I, you wouldn't know me if you see me, and I wouldn't know you. Yeah, yeah, but you know me now. Right, but because of this, we will know. But I know the name, and I know that's my cousin, your dad. Wow. Excellent, excellent. All right, but but, uh, all I, <laughs> what's that? In all, I in all, I just studied as you spoke, anyways. So I worked for it. Good, good, good. Oh yeah, you deserve that. We ain't taking that from you now. The book is on Amazon and can be borrowed for free with the Kindle Unlimited subscription. Yes, yes. Yeah, book because I'm listening from London. Colleen, <laughs> the book the, the book is available on Amazon. You go on my website because the website actually takes you to Amazon. Um, it just is an easier way of getting there. So you go on there, nathanelswing.com slash book. Actually, let me type it here. And you get it there. All right, you can order an ebook or the hard copy. Oh, and when you get a picture of the book, make sure to take a picture with yourself and the book, you know, so I could give you a shout out in one of my videos. All right. Any more questions, comments, concerns before I turn it over to Stefan? Good. All right, I think we're good. Uh, right. it was a very, very, um, very good, good session today, Nathan. Um, I took some pointers myself and I'm going to get back to that start point so we can get things moving. Um, like I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Uh, we do have another session at 7.30 PM for those of us that are interested in poetry, writing, that kind of stuff. We'll be back here at 7.30 with Clarence Albury. Other than that, we thank everyone for joining us, like I said, and please do uh, have a great day. And go ahead and check out that website and get Nathan's book. Have a great day, everyone. Great day. See y'all.